Okay, so it is time to introduce our next presenter. I, it's a pleasure to introduce Peter Priddal. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. He is the founder and CEO of MapTyler. And tonight, or at least for me in Bucharest, <laughs> tonight he's going to uh, he's going to talk about a community project, uh, MapLiber, um, Mapbox GL forks. So, um, Peter, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Kodrina. Can you hear me well? Everything runs. Yes, I can hear you well. If you have some slides to share, I can also help with that. So. Okay, so we turn on the slides. Mm -hmm. uh, so my name is Peter Bredal. I am the CEO and uh, founder of uh, MapTyler. And I'm here to speak uh, about a community project uh, called uh, MapLibre, uh, which is in fact a fork of Mapbox GL. Um, I'm here to speak also for the people so, uh, who contribute to the project and who are uh, four members uh, of the project, uh, which you see here on the side. Um, we have been lucky with the project, uh, so, so uh, there are multiple contributors and great heroes in the open source uh, community uh, who, uh, who uh, really um, donate their time and effort to bring the project forward. So it's not one-man show project, it's really uh, a project alive. And I'm here just to speak uh, out what is what is the project about and uh, how uh, it moves on. Um, so what is MapLibre? Uh, MapLibre is a mapping library for web and mobile devices, uh, quite similar to Leaflet and Open Layers, which you hear you know, on Phos4G on multiple occasions and presentations. Uh, on MapLibre, there are also other presentations in here. There were workshops and other uh, other materials for uh, people to learn. Uh, it's a community fork of uh, recently closed source Mapbox rendering stack with 100% uh, open source implementation of vector tile rendering. And uh, it remains to be open source with open source government governance. It's quite a popular project despite being, uh, uh, being alive uh, only since December. Uh, and if you want to know more, the easiest is to go to the project website at maplibre.org, um, where you can find uh, links to all the documentations and uh, also demonstration of the map. The, um, uh, the library is unique in, uh, uh, in the ability to use WebGL and OpenGL for rendering the maps. So you see these flying effects, but you can interact with the map, and that's the biggest difference to uh, open layers or leaflet, which are other alternative open source libraries. Under about uh, and projects, you find the links uh, to documentation and, and especially to GitHub and the community that is in here. Um, <clears throat> what is it? Is an uh, it is an open source project. Uh, um, we are uh, in fact uh, applying for OSGO. Uh, um, membership and uh, it's quite related to OpenStreetMap. Uh, so if you use uh, Google Maps API or another providers, like this is open source alternative to, to Google. Uh, if you combine the open data with MapLibre and uh, the visualizations, you get something similar. Um, it's all about vector tiles and displaying, displaying the vector tiles in a browser and in mobile devices. It's often used with Open Map Tiles uh, project, which provides the vector tiles, free vector tiles uh, for Open Street Map, uh, and uh, now it's also used by commercial mapping provider providers, multiple. The story of MapLibre. Um, in fact, in December uh, last year, uh, Mapbox has announced that uh, they are. Uh, Great Mapbox GLGS library has been a closed source, so they switched the license from BSD license to Mapbox terms, and whoever loads the library uh, in a browser through JavaScript needs to pay Mapbox for uh, initiating the library, which is quite a unique license. This also means, unfortunately, that uh, independently whether you use some Mapbox services or not with the library, 
but then you had to pay for uh, initializing uh, the code. And uh, that's where, uh, where quite a big wave on the community appeared because of the previously uh, available license BSD um, provided much more freedom uh, on ability to load the maps from your own server. And that's, uh, that's why, why uh, in fact, MapLibre was born. So within a couple of hours, uh, there was a first meeting of people who created forks on GitHub and who met on, uh, on uh, um, uh, Hacker News and uh, discussed what uh, needs to be done on the project to have a viable alternative uh, to uh, the closed source uh, code. And uh, these forks um, were then merged into one fork, uh, and we tried to duplicate all the efforts um, and really focus on one fork, which is going to be the one taken on by community. Um, essential from the beginning on uh, was really defining uh, this doesn't happen again. So there is no control of a single company over the code base, and that there is open source governance uh, defined in the community. And we also discussed quite a lot how to motivate people to contribute. So really on December 9, uh, we all wrote memorandum, the, the four people who created the forks on GitHub and defined the rules, uh, published it on Twitter, and it has had quite uh, a good response uh, on the social network, social media. Um, so this was the beginning. Uh, in fact, the, the name MapLibre uh, comes from a map library uh, reborn or MapLibre as a freedom in the in the mapping called Libre the freedom part uh, and Yuri is the one who who contributed with the name um, the map Libre has uh, two parts one is a JavaScript rendering uh, inside of a web browser um, which gives you the two and half D rendering of maps where you can tilt and rotate and it uses uh, hardware acceleration on a GPU um, it's, it's accurate and interactive uh, way how to display uh, vector tiles, especially, uh, but also raster tiles in a browser um, with uh, no tracking at all and ability to bring in plugins and additional functionality. And it helps you to create your own application uh, with JavaScript with uh, the uh, functions and, and modern interaction with the maps. Um, it's pretty easy to start. In fact, all what you need is uh, 20 lines of HTML and you have a map uh, which is zoomable. Um, so uh, anybody can really start and start to use MapLibre instead of Leaflet or, or, or other libraries. Uh, not, not a big deal. It's all based around the style JSON and uh, GLJS uh, um, is loading the vector tiles in the MBT. Uh, format and uh, uh, and the styles are in the GLJS GL, uh, specification. Um, there is a great uh, uh, documentation uh, with APIs uh, and examples uh, launched. So if you if you are uh, on the website of MapLibre, here is uh, sorry. Uh, the GLJS uh, set of reference documentation with uh, examples taken over from the latest uh, version of Mapbox and uh, rewritten uh, to to load uh, the MapLibre library, and uh, that's that's the great way how to how to start to learn and uh, try different functions of the software. Uh, recently, we've launched also YouTube uh, tutorials for beginners. Uh, so if you are really new into mapping and are just starting with uh, with polygons and lines and markers, um, you can just just Google MapLibre tutorials and and you will find these online and it will guide you through. Um, the other part of the library, so next to the JavaScript, uh, there is also native implementation, which in fact shows the same styles. The maps uh, looks exactly the same, but instead of implementation of the rendering in JavaScript. Uh, this is uh, this is done in C++ uh, and OpenGL uh, ES uh, with shaders uh, which are shared between the code. 
And this gives you ability to create native application on Android and iOS and, and other, uh, other Android-based devices, including Qt, embedded source code, and uh, like Windows and, and other, uh, other compiled uh, implementation of the native code. Uh, it provides the same rendering capabilities, the same functionality, uh, and uh, it's practically an alternative to Google Maps SDK on Android or Apple MapKit, which you may use uh, in native applications but uh, fully open source uh, with BSD license and ability to adjust everything what you need to adjust in the code. Um, in fact, uh, Mapbox has decided to close down this part of the previously open source uh, code base back in April, and therefore MapTiler, the company where I work, in, um, we started to work on, a, on a, a iOS and uh, Android SDK based on the latest work, and then uh, it was released and merged into MapLibre. So we contributed with the code back to the MapLibre organization, and now it's with the open source community governance uh, maintained further and improved uh, by more people and multiple companies. Um, the, uh, the Android uh, has a wrapper with Kotlin and uh, Java. The iOS uh, is uh, with Swift and Objective-C. Usable. There are also ports for Mac in Qt, and uh, and uh, you can contribute with other bindings and uh, define uh, your own uh, usage on top of the native code. Uh, everything is uh, with the BSD license as previously. Uh, there is no telemetry, uh, no tracking of the users, complete privacy, and true open source. And thanks to Amazon developers. Uh, there is now also implementation of Apple Metal, so so now nowadays it's uh, quite safe also for the future version of iOS devices. Um, to write your own application, it's uh, also relatively easy in like 30 lines on uh, Android and uh, 20 lines on, on iOS. Um, you have a very basic application and we will have a presentation about the about, uh, mobile applications uh, just after this block. So, so if you stay on this track, you will hear more. Uh, there are documentations for these iOS and Android from the times when, when MapTiler launched uh, these uh, SDKs. So you can go to mapTilerDocs.com uh, slash docs and uh, see their tutorials and, uh, and try to develop your own app on your own. What is the status of the project? And what is uh, coming next on MapLibre? Um, we really had a lot uh, to, uh, to plan. So the initial, initial part of the project was really all about setting up the community governance, launching the GitHub repository, and, uh, and deciding who is the steering committee, how to run the open source project in a proper way, that, uh, that there is a uh, correct delegation of the control and voting and, uh, and everything is set up the way it should be. Um, then we were very keen on, on having uh, the table release with the JavaScript and also uh, release of iOS and Android. This has been successful. Thanks to the community contribution, they already come up the, the examples and uh, reference documentation on the website, which has been ported to MapLibre from the original latest version of uh, Mapbox. Uh, we launched the project website and YouTube tutorials. Now in progress, there is the uh, metal rendering with, uh, uh, on iOS, uh, which is under development, especially from the, from the contribution from Amazon team. Um, ongoing is a huge rewrite of the JavaScript library into TypeScript. Uh, so that's something that will be published together on the upcoming release 2.0. And 3D Terran visualization uh, uh, is also uh, on the plan for 2.0. If everything goes well, it's going to be merged and become part of 2.0 release. Uh, for the future, uh, there are a couple of ideas, but it's already driven uh, by by the people who are keen to contribute and by the different uh, teams and individuals who, who work on the feature. So if you have your own idea, feel free to join uh, on truesmaplibre.org or GitHub. You find links to Slack where, where the community is very actively speaking 
and uh, you can you can just talk about anything any idea you you have uh, and uh, feel free to create an issue on github discuss uh, there's also a discussion forum on github so you can you can just talk propose anything what you uh, what you would like to implement and uh, if there is uh, good feedback from the community, it can be easily accepted as a pull request uh, into the code base. Um, one of the, some of the cool things which we, which we were talking about is ability potentially to, to show the, the world, like a switcher to be able to show the globe, uh, you zoom out instead of a Mercator. And uh, quite a big thing has been also about uh, potential ability to add support for custom coordinate systems, non-mercator, uh, because that's essential for the national uh, national government bodies um, and cadastral maps and and other uh, other um, people who who need the local coordinate systems. Uh, so it is well; those are things uh, together with like binding closer binding to open layers and leaflet which are really discussed and uh, uh, proposed. Um, it, because of, because MapLibre has become the reference implementation of the vector tiles, um, we were talking about uh, different approaches, how we can move on with the JSON specification of the styles and propose adjustments, uh, uh, the way that the open source community accept them. Um, so that's, that's about the roadmap and what has been uh, done. If you have ideas, as I said, very, you are very welcome to uh, join, propose uh, through GitHub and discuss on Slack um, anything related to the project. Um, who is in control? Currently, uh, there is a steering committee, so technical steering committee, uh, which uh, anybody who is actively contributing to the project can, can join. Uh, we are meeting once per month uh, through the video calls and uh, discuss uh, directions of the project and potential proposals uh, which needs discussion. Uh, also, the governance of the project is is uh, practically is practically happening on these meetings. Um, currently, there is also uh, there are four board members. Uh, uh, which were the original four people who formed the project in the beginning, and there is going to be uh, democratical voting uh, for the new uh, new four members uh, in the board, in the steering uh, board, um, which is proposed latest uh, by the next FOS4G. Um, the project is not organically grown, but, uh, but uh, it's made out of... Uh, of the uh, latest Mapbox, uh, uh, Mapbox open source version, uh, but it has already attracted quite a viable uh, community and people who are contributing, practically using it and uh, really discussing. What we have learned from uh, launching Maplibre um, is really supporting the community is hard work. You, you need to put a lot of effort into uh, like having um, the project properly communicated out, having having them the logos and uh, also channels for people to discuss and uh, um, feeling for for um, you contribute that it's welcome and uh, that that there are no blockers and there are no really no blockers on this project. Um, open source project needs time and patience. That's another another big part of uh, of uh, lessons learned here. And uh, if there is no community, there is really no really project because because uh, uh, it needs multiple people who who uh, benefit, who have their needs, and who want to push the project forward. And I'm really glad that that these people find themselves uh, in the project and meet and regularly talk and move on uh, on uh, working on the next version. Um, yeah, another thing we have learned is uh, better than to ask for money uh, is to ask for active developers. So if we are uh, talking to a bigger corporation, um, it's uh, it's easier for them and also. Uh, uh, more essential for the open source project 
to have people actively working and uh, this has happened. Um, so there are, there are people contributing from multiple companies to the project and synchronizing uh, the effort on uh, their side. Um, in the beginning, we were also looking for foundations uh, for legal protections to avoid any, any issues. Uh, but we have learned from that that uh, uh, the foundations and organization usually don't uh, provide you proactively uh, the, the legal protection. They, they uh, act in the moment of a threat or a problem. And uh, therefore, the more important part is uh, being sure that the project doesn't accept any, any uh, legally problematic parts uh, in the contribution from the community. That's why um, we have one of the next big things, uh, also scanning of the back compatibility uh, on the code as part of continuous integration process. So if there are pull requests, we are sure now we are carefully reviewing and we are sure in the future also choose the automated matters that, that no code has been copy and pasted from, uh, uh, from another code basis. Um, it would be great if you really join the project. Uh, it's pretty easy if, uh, if you want to migrate from Mapbox to MapLibre. Um, there are multiple tutorials and also bindings to React.js, Vue, and others. And uh, if you are really using NPM and dependencies in your code, then uh, uh, the switch is relatively easy. The version one is back compatible. Now, in fact, we have 1.15. Uh, so so you, can, you can load the, the latest uh, MapLibre GL with the NPM as a dependency and just uh, switch the existing code to MapLibre. Um, and the more documentation for the React and, and other bindings are then available on GitHub and on maplibre.org. Um, uh, feel free to dig deeper in the project. So after you start to use it and you, if you discover a bug or um, anything what, what needs uh, improvement, uh, please report this as, as issue. Uh, there, are, there are people actively talking and uh, communicating around the issues on GitHub. And uh, if you have a bit of time writing documentation as you learn, this is the, the best way how to contribute to any project uh, in the open source, not only to MapLibre. Um, and it would be very, very welcome on, uh, on uh, this project. If you don't have time or if you are a company who is actively using MapLibre in your commercial product, uh, it would be really lovely uh, to either donate people who, uh, who are contributing to the project or uh, provide a financial domain donation so, so we may have potentially uh, in the future uh, some budget to support uh, grants on development of the features and also on the maintenance of the project. For the summary, uh, we have went through the introduction of the MapLibre, what was the story, the two different uh, versions, the JavaScript and native implementation, uh, status of the project, roadmap, what is coming up, the release 2.0 on uh, JavaScript and new uh, Metal on Android, uh, and uh, what we have learned from the community and how to join the project. So uh, that's all for this presentation. We'd be very glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. And we have three questions and about two minutes <laughs> left. So um, I will start with, will MapLibre aim to maintain feature API par uh, parity with Mapbox GL GS, or would it diverge and become its own thing? Uh, in uh, version one, uh, we are fully compatible. In version two, um, we may start to introduce uh, new, new adjustments and uh, the two projects will di diverge. So it's not necessarily planned to implement everything what is in Mapbox 2.0 and farther. Uh, the project has its own path and different feature set and different uh, APIs, but the, there is a need to remain as close as possible with the compatibility for people to easily migrate. Thank you. Um, another question. Uh, are there plans to support React Native or Flutter uh, library for mobile app? I believe Flutter is already supported, and I don't know about React Native because the native part is, uh, I mean, React.js is. Uh, 
um, uh, it all it's all community project. So whoever needs the wrapper in React Native, get, uh, the the native uh, like AppLibre native can be wrapped in React Native. Uh, so I, I I perhaps it's already done on GitHub. Just check check on GitHub and. Uh, it can be for sure migrated from uh, MapLibre latest open source version to uh, from Mapbox latest open source version to MapLibre. Thank so you. Answer is perhaps yes. <laughs> so one more question: How does MapLibre compare versus, say, Open Layers Leaflet? I mentioned that Open Layers and uh, Leaflet doesn't have this tilt, and and uh, they are not hardware accelerated uh, by default. Uh, MapLibre is heavily based on WebGL and uh, uh, vector tiles and uh, font rendering on the client side. So all these things uh, differ in the in the performance and ability to display a large number of data. Uh, Leaflet is really about raster tiles mostly and basic API. Mm, MapLibre is more about the visualizations. Open Layers is excellent if you have advanced features requirements such as uh, custom coordinate systems or uh, ability to load various formats. But, so the three really each has their own use case. Okay. So thank you very much. And a last requirement, do you have links to slides? <laughs> Uh, sure, we can we can post them where I will post them. Mapteller.link slash uh, MapLibre slides. If you write to me in the private chat, I can just switch it and copy yeah. paste it to the to the venue list. So yeah. we are going to uh, publish the link soon, but but. Uh, The link it doesn't it doesn't exist yet, but uh, I will put it there just after all this session. Mm -hmm. And okay, I see no more question. <clears throat> It is link. Perfect. I am copy pasting it into the venue list. And there you go. Okay. So thank you very much for your uh, presentation, your time, and um, for answering the questions. Um, I think we need to get ready for the next Map Tyler presentation. Um, is your colleague uh, Peter Pokorny is going to be present, or is it you? Yeah. It's uh, him. No, no. Peter oh, Pokorny okay. is going to. Okay. Be coming up here. Hmm? Okay. Then. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks.